Welcome to Occupy Brooklyn TV. I'm Melanie Butler. And I'm Kitana Andrews. Here's today's top stories. In New York, Occupy's army of musicians is attacked by Mayor Bloomberg's private army of police. The rent strike in Sunset Park continues, as does the Con Ed lockout. We'll look at the fight against fracking around the nation. And looking around the world, we'll report on the anti-nuclear movement in Japan, the miners' struggle in Spain, and growing unrest in Mexico. NBC New York reported earlier this week that the New York Police Department had linked evidence in the 2004 unsolved murder of Juilliard student Sarah Fox to an Occupy Wall Street protester, reporting that the evidence, quote, seemed to come out of nowhere, end quote. Indeed. Later that afternoon, the New York Times was already debunking its own article on the story, reporting that the link was most likely an error, with the DNA in question belonging to an NYPD lab technician who handled evidence from both cases. Police had taken DNA evidence from a chain at the scene of a March 28th action that saw activists chain open subway gates, providing free admission to the subway that morning. This action was not sanctioned by Wall Occupy Wall Street. It is believed that OWS-affiliated activists acting independently of OWS, together with Wildcat MTA workers, were responsible for the action. The DNA on the chain was said to have matched DNA found on Sarah Fox's CD player, which was found near her body in Inwood Park in 2004. Although the scene of the MTA action was not the scene of violence, the NYPD looked for DNA there and then searched its vast database of DNA of both criminal and non-criminal offenders for any matches. The story was picked up by numerous outlets, including the New York Post, the New York Times, The Village Voice, New York Magazine, Gawker, and Gothamist, as well as CNBC, ABC News, and of course, Fox News, with the headline Occupy Wall Street Murder Link in its retraction. The New York Times wrote that, quote, the decision by investigators to search for DNA samples on the chain, which was used to hold open a subway entrance gate, illustrates how such collections have become a routine part of a wide range of criminal investigations, end quote. The statement ignores established knowledge about the use of DNA in criminal justice. While DNA can be a particularly powerful identification tool, it is only a piece of evidence and should be weighed with the context of the case in mind.